How's it going everyone? It's Sam. This is going to be a crazy next three days. We have a lot that's going on and I want to cover it, give you some expectations for what CPI is going to look like, what PPI is going to look like, what Jerome Powell could say because we have a lot coming. I also want to talk about what's happened over the last few days just to remind you all the stuff that's been happening here and to talk to you about why the government's lying to you, what they're lying about because it does and it should influence you're investing. So if you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn that bell notification so you know right when I post future videos. Also, if you want to know what I'm buying and selling, not just in crypto, but also in stocks, you can check out the link to Patreon. I send multiple messages a day on what's happening in the market, even if I'm not buying anything that day. So check that out underneath the video. As you can see, crypto is rebounding a bit, up 1.6% after a lot of altcoins fell significantly. I mean, look at this. BNB down 22% this week, Cardano down 27, Dogecoin down 15, Solana down 28, Polygon down 28. So many cryptos just bleeding to Bitcoin. Bitcoin's down 4.1%. The only crypto that's doing better than Bitcoin that I see out of the top you know, 15 is XRP which is surprising, but that's good news uh, that, you know, if you have been holding on to Bitcoin, the dominance is ticking up right now. We can see that here, Bitcoin dominance at the highest level that we've seen since 2021, which I have been saying for a year plus that I'm, the majority of my crypto is in Bitcoin. Now, we've had a lot of crazy stuff happening this week. First of all, SEC charging Coinbase, also SEC charging Binance as well. It did say that 67 cryptocurrencies are now seen as securities. Binance had a lot of issues too. They had to uh, stop USD withdrawals and deposits. Uh, the withdrawals will be good for a few more days, but they had to delist a lot of trading pairs as well. Binance US is really what's affected right now, but it is scary for the whole crypto industry. Now, that being said, if you're holding your keys to your own wallet, if you are self custodian then you are fine, but still not what you want to see. Uh, but we may need to see a little bit more fear before we get back into a bull market, a little bit more of a devastation of crypto because there are still a good number of people watching. And typically we don't see that by the end of the bear market. We also saw GM adopting Tesla's charging network and we saw Tesla move up another 12% on the month up 45% as my largest holding of anything now. This is fantastic, uh, but I still think Tesla is a great company. Now, it could fall down. Crypto could fall down. Everything could fall down this week because we have a couple big things coming up. I'm not saying that it will, but we have some big events coming up. I think overall, the last couple months have been really bullish for the market. We've seen more liquidity come into the system. We've seen macro get better because inflation is falling down here in the US. The debt ceiling was no issue. And this is causing the markets to rally. As we can see, CPI is coming this week. And at the peak, it was up at 9.1%. Last month, it was at 4.9%. So we have that coming in just two days on Tuesday. Now, what can you expect? Cleveland Fed's now cast thinks that inflation month on month will come in at 0.19%. So basically 0.2 and core inflation at 0.45. So annualized inflation rates of 4.1% and core 5.3%. So we're almost in the 3% range. This is a big jump, big jump down from 4.9%. Just a couple months ago, we were at 6%, a couple months before that 7%. So we are making a lot of progress. We also have the PPI coming in Wednesday. So the producer price index is more of a leading indicator. And last month, we got 2.3% versus the expected 2.4%. The month before, we got 2.7% versus the expected 3%. So we've had a couple of good prints in a row. The forecast is only 1.1%. So very low here. And you can see this even was higher. is 11.5% just cratering now. Almost down 10% the last year or so, year and a couple months. And then we also have the Fed meeting. So the Fed meeting ends on Wednesday. Jerome Powell is going to give his speech on what he's seeing in the market. How much are they going to raise rates? As of now, there's a 70% chance that they are not going to raise rates at this meeting. Now, recently, Canada ended up raising rates by 25 basis points, but they have a hotter economy. They also do not have rates as high as we have had or that we have them. They also have been paused for months. So I still think there's a good chance that the Fed might just all out pause this meeting. If they don't, 
we could see some fear in the market, but I'm not even sure that's going to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if we got 25 basis points. We had a red day and then everyone realized, okay, this is really the last step the Fed's going to have to do. There's a question over whether they're going to have to raise any more, but then uh, this is the last step that they are going to have to take and then they won't have to raise anymore. So uh, unless they do something really wonky or in case he speaks and says that we're going to have to keep rates here for a very long time or something like that, I think this is going to be good for the market. This is the U-turn. Now, part of that's priced into the market. As we can see, the last couple months, the market's done extremely well. Last month, Jerome Powell said that they're going to make decisions meeting by meeting and also flagged an, a year of aggressive rate increases. Officials can afford to look at the data and the evolving outlook to make careful assessments. So maybe they're just done raising rates. We're going to have to see how he approaches this i'm guessing he's going to speak very similarly they've done a really good job of just saying exactly what they're going to do so they might just say hey we're still taking it meeting by meeting they did say that they weren't looking to pause and then continue to raise rates or anything like that they really want to get it up to the peak terminal rate and then come back down basically because they don't want to make some of the mistakes that people have made in the past which is that inflation continues and then they have to keep on raising rates and then it really breaks the economy so a lot of how the market reacts is going to be due to, I think, how Jerome Powell speaks. This is the same thing that's been happening for the last year or so. So pay attention to exactly how dovish or hawkish he speaks during the during the speech around, um, was that 2 p.m. Eastern time? So we'll have to be on the lookout for that. Maybe it's 2.30. It's half an hour after they come out with the rates. Now, the Fed has been lying to you, so they have been saying that they have been sucking liquidity out of the system, basically trying to reduce the Fed balance sheet, and that could cause some pain in the markets. That's what we have seen, but the net Fed liquidity has started to tick up. So you can see when that happens, the S&P 500 moves up. We also have seen that uh, here for five consecutive weeks, Fed Reserve lending to banks through the bank term funding pro program has edged up to a new high to 100 billion. Ironically, the S&P 500, along with most uh, fat mang stocks, closed at the high of the year. So as the Fed continues to print, they find some way to print. They find some way to add liquidity to the system. It doesn't really matter how it is that they add liquidity to the system, but when they do that, the markets move up and they're going to continue to do this. Uh, we can see how the NASDAQ has fared versus the extra liquidity in the system. We can also see how Bitcoin has fared. A lot of assets move up when they start pumping liquidity back into the system. And this is obviously uh, very tied to the market. You can see August 10 reserve balances with Fed banks, 3.348 trillion. And the SPX was 4,325. June 7, so what? Nine months later, 10 months later, reserve balances with Fed, the exact same within $10 billion and SPX within $2. So zero net change in liquidity, zero change in the SPX. This is what causes the markets to move a lot of the time, at least the overall markets. Right? You can still get outperformance from specific stocks, but with the Fed starting to look like they're going to U-turn, inject more money into the system, this should cause asset prices to go up. This is where you want to hold on to assets and take advantage of that. Uh, now, we know this is going to continue to because they did just raise the debt ceiling. They're going to continue to print money, continue to spend money, continue to add liquidity into the system because they don't have any other way of doing business. That's pretty much what they have to do because they have dug themselves into a hole unless they want to make some drastic change. But Politicians aren't going to want to put their campaign on that. They're going to be voted out of office most likely if they do that. But let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. That is what they've been lying to you about recently. The bull market's back on, baby. If you haven't already noticed that, the NASDAQ's up 45, no, not 45%, but the top stocks in the NASDAQ are up 100%, 50%. Top seven stocks in the S&P 500 are accounting for the entire gain of the S&P 500 this year. The bull market's back on. Crypto is still fighting regulatory uncertainty, but that's to be expected. And this is still the pre-having year. So we will get back to a bull market. Just don't spend everything. Keep some cash if you're looking to invest in crypto. But for stocks, hopefully you're invested because 
this U-turn has been in our sights for a while, and it seems like this is the week where it happens. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.